everybody. So today we are going to be walking through ACE, which is a completely open source way of structuring a taxonomy that is really taking the uh, method that Aristotle first created, which is all about attributes and how those attributes can be used to logically structure a taxonomy hierarchy. So this one is primarily used in the geoscience space, but today we have a really fun example using candy, and I am joined by a special guest as well. All right, so if this sounds interesting to you, let's go get started. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Um, so as you, as you mentioned, my name's Sam. I work for an AI company, and our goal is to sort of make solutions for the geosciences. And my job in particular is to find out ways that we can make those solutions work better for mining and mineral exploration um, applications and, and kind of those industries. And I think you're going to walk us through a taxonomy of candy. And uh, can you walk us through, like, where did we get from geosciences to candy? How do those things come together? How we got to the candy taxonomy specifically is, um, you know, in order to demonstrate something about taxonomies and how our particular taxonomy tool works, um, using something like a vehicle taxonomy, which is what I've done before, you did your pizza taxonomy, um, the candy taxonomy is a, is a much more um, accessible version. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think people love that. I mean, I know you're gonna you're gonna test the boundaries here, Sam. You're going to make us really think. What is a Milky Way bar? Right? Is that absolutely. the one? Yeah, yes. Milky Way bar. Um, so this is fun. I I love doing fun examples. The tool that we use um, to develop our my, the taxonomies that we use is called ACE, and it's similar to a lot of other taxonomy development tools that you can find out there. And, mm -hmm. But the focus kind of, the reason we'll bring in the candy <clears throat> is that it it assigns the hierarchy in your taxonomy a bit differently than you might in another program. Mm -hmm. And it actually uses principles that were originally laid down by Aristotle. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's where the A uh, in the name comes from. And essentially it's looking at when you're trying to assign hierarchy between classes, you're looking at the attributes and um, of each of them, and the attributes uh, decide what is the parent, the child, or mm -hmm. sibling mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. And um, ACE is a free tool, so uh, we can put a link to it in the um, in the video. And yeah, part of the reason it's important for something like AI is that you and I, uh, as people, we understand that, and we and can make little logical leaps, right? Mm -hmm. So there's most of human conversation is actually left, left, uh, left up to context. Yeah. And this is something that, you know, if you're building an AI system, it, it struggles to oh, use yeah. context. Mm -hmm. you know, if I say my shirt is blue, um, I'm probably talking about the color and not the sort of uh, mood state, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's, you know that because you know what a t-shirt is and that t-shirts usually have colors and et cetera like that. So yeah, it's that human understanding of our collective insights. Right. Exactly. No, it's 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 exactly the challenge that AI is, is facing right now, because if mm -hmm. you just throw more and more mountains of data at it, it can't spontaneously understand context. It can understand it can get things right by by brute force sometimes. But there's yeah. sometimes where context um, is is something that's necessary. My my favorite example always is you can show people, um, you know, your a business card and your driver's license. Right. Mm -hmm. And instantly they the sort of machine learning part of their brain has identified them as such you know they don't even have conscious access to that information but then if you ask them you know which one of these will get me into um a bar mm -hmm. um the answer to that question is a knowledge sort of cognitive answer mm -hmm. there's nothing about the two pieces of information in front of them that say that so that that's yeah. the knowledge side of the spectrum. Yeah, that's the implicit knowledge that's it's kind of tucked away in text and discourse and all kinds of things that people do with each other every day that the machines need help with. Yeah. So yeah, let's jump into it, Sam. Let's see what it looks like. Basically, to understand what ACE is doing, um, you got to understand that it's looking at properties and values, and then it's using the combinations of those, the combinations called an attribute, mm -hmm. to um, assign the hierarchy. So if we look here, we just have all the candies that I um, picked out. Um, and these are all 
you can see have no hierarchy amongst themselves, right? So they're mm -hmm. just listed here. And each of these columns represents a property. So size, color, shape, texture, mm -hmm. et cetera. And then a value in one of those properties is something like brown or red or blue. Um, <clears throat> so what ACE is going to be doing is it's going to look at the combination of all of these attributes, right? It's got the mm -hmm. brown color, the very large size, and then it's it's looking to see which of the classes here that we're trying to organize have um, the same number of attributes, or sorry, the same exact attributes, or the same with a single different attribute. Mm -hmm. And the idea there is under this these Aristotle principles, um, if two things have the same exact attributes, they're the same. Then if um, something else has the same attributes, but one additional one, it then is logically a subtype of the mm -hmm. first. So you could say it's got, it's, it's a um, very large brown piece of candy, but then it also has the soft texture. So that would mm -hmm. mean it's got, it's more specific. And so it's mm -hmm. a more specific type of. Mm -hmm. So what it'll do when we hit infer is it will look at all the different classes um, and then logically, or then arrange them based on their um, inferred hierarchy. And so what this has done is, you, and you and I talked about this offline a little bit about these, these types of um, uh, taxonomy structures where I've created something that's very simple. It just is candy that is rounded, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I click this, now I have the different type of candy within here. And mm -hmm. you can see the other thing that these types of principles work on is you can have the same number of attributes, mm -hmm. but the value is a more specific version. So, um, you know, a cone is a rounded shape, but it's a more specific um, shape than just being round. And so you mm -hmm. can continue going down here. And then once we've got down to disc shaped candy, now we're seeing a lot of these actual individual candy types, right? That and I so based on what you were just describing about one attribute being different than, than the whole. So let's go back to spheroid mm -hmm. or no, I guess let's go to disc because you were, you were looking at disc. Yeah. So you've got disc open and one is saying that disc is a sub property of rounded. Correct. But how does it, it doesn't know that because all the candies that are rounded have the same principles basically. And then there's maybe a handful of them that say something else that's disc. How does it know that disc isn't the broader term of right. rounded? So, so the goal here is that at some point you have to assert some truths about the world, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea that ACE is trying to avoid is normally in taxonomies, the classes themselves are what the taxonomist is asserting have hierarchy with each mm -hmm. other. I'm saying that, a, you know, a shockers is a this, right? Mm -hmm. But what, what ACE is doing is you take the, what's called a value hierarchy, and that's the, um, here is where I have made my decisions, right? I, I'm just telling ACE that a disc is a subtype, is, is narrower than, than rounded. So the idea is at all these little spots where generally these, the values in your property are going to be a lot simpler than your classes. And so mm -hmm. I can say something that, you know, um, uh, there are certain shapes of candies that are animals. Mm -hmm. And then given this, I, I just declare that bear is a type of animal, right? Mm -hmm. And that it, and that it was a worm is an animal. And I put another one in here, aquatic animals, because if we've got some of those. And so the idea is your value hierarchies tend to be really simple, right? Like mm -hmm. these are very, very, very simple. So it's easier to just assert some sort of inf uh, piece of information about this. And the reason this is really important for science and not necessarily just candy taxonomies is in a scientific taxonomy like rocks or minerals, a lot of times the decisions are very controversial, right? Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm, right. I'm saying that this rock is a, is, is a type of this and another geologist disagrees and so the idea with something like ACE, it's not uh, me and the other geologists arguing at the word level, right? At the class mm -hmm. level, we can actually then say, well, how do you define it, right? 
you know, if someone disagrees that, you know, um, fun dip is not a, is not um, the same as pixie sticks, right? Mm -hmm. So if if people are aware of these, you know, fun dip has the sugary flavored candy and pixie sticks is the sugary flavored candy made by the same people. And so someone can strongly disagree that those powders are different, but instead of just arguing, they can see, well, mm -hmm. how did you define it? And I said, it's a fine candy of any color. That's a powder. It's got sort of a grainy texture. Mm -hmm. It's sugar on the outside, sugar on the inside. It's a type of branded uh, candy. It's it's flavor palette, it's fruity, and it's it doesn't have anything that's not sugar in it, right? And so right. someone can look at all of those. And now our conversation is on these not the class name mm -hmm. and the class level and where it sits. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is helpful when you have, I mean, I think this highlights the importance of having just metadata standards in general, right? Because yeah. you clearly have all the attributes that you want and you have basically the mini hierarchies right. for each of those attributes. And that helps you, you know, clearly define what something is. But if somebody comes in and says, well, I want to define one is in a straw and one is in a dip that you can, exactly. you can eat, right? right? Okay, well, that's not an attribute that we capture, but that I think to your point facilitates that conversation to say, okay, should it be an attribute? Because right. maybe other things would be affected by that. So well, exactly. I do, yeah, I like how this, um, it's not just the taxonomous tool. I love that this is starting discussions with the end users and, and your stakeholders that you probably would have missed out on otherwise. Well, and to your point, we could add a new property called container, right? Mm -hmm. Now, not all uh, not all candies have a container, right? Mm -hmm. But then the container for Pixie Sticks would be a straw, and the mm -hmm. container for Fun Dip would be a pouch. And then suddenly, they would be slightly different, right? So and in that case, if that happened, what would the inference engine in ACE do? Would it make one a sub-property of another if I defined them that way? What if I don't define them that way? What does it do? So they would then become siblings because they have the okay. same identical properties, except mm -hmm. that they differ each on the new one. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so then basically what we would do is there would be, there could be a new parent class, which is uh, where we have identified, um, we could make a uh, sugary candy and then be silent on the, on the um, container. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if you're silent on the property, it it sort of does it treats it neutrally. And that's why these top yeah. level classes work, mm -hmm. because this is not being this is not declaring anything about the size or the color or any mm -hmm. of these other. It's saying all I'm saying is these are all the candies that have mm -hmm. any type of rounded. But what you hit upon is actually critical because the biggest, biggest difference about what we call an asserted taxonomy which is mm -hmm. where I have to make decisions about every single mm -hmm. piece of information. And an inferred taxonomy is when I make a change and I hit inferred, <clears throat> it doesn't care what I wanted it to be. It shows me what it is. It's brutal yeah. logic. Um, but mm -hmm. the beauty is that you, when you update a taxonomy, if it looks right, it's correct. Whereas in asserted taxonomy, if you make a change, you now have to actually see how that change affects. Yeah, you. when you're doing inference, that you can also see the visual, and you mm -hmm. can kind of see those circular logic points. You can see right. when you're inferring things. Wait a minute, I didn't want that to. Why is it showing up there? Right? It's almost like you can then go and check the logic, not the logic of the tool. The tool's logic hasn't changed. It's right. your logic right. your that logic. you're fixing. <laughs> And the other thing that is nice is, is it really highlights your biases. Uh, it was lollipop, right. So when I originally made these classes and I was populating them uh, with all their information, um, I chose spherical for lollipop mm -hmm. because in my head at the time when I entered it in, I was thinking of something like a Dum Dum or mm -hmm. a Tootsie Pop, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then really, I mean, if you think about, you know, rounded, um, this can, it can be a sphere. You can have the sort of, um, what is it? Shirley Temple style, you know, swirly disc, yeah, right? Yeah. So a lollipop can be a lot of different shapes, but my entry bias, I called it mm -hmm. a, an actual sphere. And so when I was looking at it, you know, it, it, I think it was something like the, it was a child of Chupa Chups. Yeah. And I was 
like, how did it get there? And then I was looking through the different um, attributes and I was like, oh yeah, my lollipops, if I'm, I'm being really specific here when it's a very general candy yeah. type. Yeah. So, and real quick, let me just, uh, I'll show you what this, uh, what a, a, a rock, you know, a real domain taxonomy looks yep. like. And so you can see we have all these, we have a lot of rock types that we need to deal with. <laughs> And they actually have more different properties than. Um, oh yeah, candy. of course. And and the nice thing is that um, the other thing that ACE does is you can actually tell it whether or not a particular property is for information only, mm. or if it needs to be reasoned with. So That's something nice. like color isn't really in um, a useful classifying property for things mm. like a rock because a rocks can can really really vary in color. Um, so you can have that information, but basically ACE is not using it to make taxonomy sort of decisions mm -hmm. about. Yeah, so we go down here and this is another thing that I, how it deals with synonyms is instead of declaring something as a synonym or another, you mm -hmm. then have to give it the same attributes, right? Because mm -hmm. that's that's mm -hmm. what ACE knows is a synonym. But when mm -hmm. you have it, you know, there's these technical terms for geol that geologists have that an Alaska Aluka granite and an alkali feldspar granite are all technically the same thing. They're just yep. different names for it. So, so yeah. And and another thing to keep in mind for for those watching, if you want to start to learn something that you don't know much about, for instance, geology, hmm. start at the top and work your way through. If you're dealing with machine learning, you can take um, a machine learning type called curriculum uh, modeling type. That's what this is essentially, right? Like you start at the highest level, you learn what a rock is. Okay, I understand that. Now let me go to the next level and say, okay, uh, a massive uh, sulfide rock right. and a rocks by green size. Oh, I didn't know green size was a thing. Let me learn about that. And right. then you keep drilling into it and sooner or later, you're going to feel like you know more about this space uh, without having to be overwhelmed, right? Like drinking from a fire hose, hierarchies really help you not do that. Yeah. I, I really uh, appreciate you showing us all of, I mean, it's so fun to do ta taxonomy with with fun topics. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm so happy you chose uh, candy. Yeah, I got. I even brought my own today. Yeah. Now you're in Canada, so what are those called? Oh, this is an excellent. Yeah, okay. So these are called rockets in Canada. If you're in the yeah. U.S., these are called Smarties. Right now, yeah. these happen to be a gigantic version of them, but <laughs> it can be very confusing because Smarties in Canada are basically Canada's domestic M and M's. So mm -hmm. this is a, a great example because you need to if you you need to organize things by their attributes because the name is usually unhelpful. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely.